Hello and welcome to Fresh Face One Shots. My name is Joey. I'm Jacob. And we have a guest joining us today for this. Actually, this is the first time on Fresh Face One Shots we're actually talking about a one shot. So uh, yes, joining, yes. Us, <laughs> joining us at long last back on the channel, Kira, I'm so glad to have you back. Hello, I'm glad to be back, especially yeah. for the gay, as the gay, it were. Yes. Yeah, as, as it were, yeah. Um, we're here to talk about DC's 2023 Pride anthology, um, which is uh, which is pretty exciting actually, because I, I don't know, I just I read these every year. They're they're full, they're usually full of really great stories, and um, yeah, I don't know, I'm happy to talk about this on the channel. Um, and also, of course, I, Pride Month is important. You know, show your support in any way that you can. Um, it's a very important time. So yeah, so specifically um, by giving me money. Yes, Give me money, absolutely. Please. Yes, yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> we're off to <laughs> great. All right, let's get into this. Uh, our first story here is by one Grant Morrison, uh, Love's Lightning Heart, which is a multiversity story. Question, who here has actually read multiversity? Because <laughs> I haven't. Jacob, I know I you have. I have not either. I have not. Yeah. <laughs> but I, isn't are, it like we, alternate universe here. versions of like characters that you know basically, right? Like, yeah, and it, it's also meant to be sort of like just a guide to DC's multiverse. Um, and uh, yeah. Morrison, Morrison is the mastermind of that. Um, and it's cool, but I've never read it. I know it's it's been on my reading list forever, um, but clearly we are all very well prepared to talk about this story. Well, um, but Jacob, here's I know you, the, I know you really I, enjoyed it. I, I don't know. There was something just really sweet about it. Mm. Um, part of it might just be because it's great. I have a feeling this is a thing that's going to happen whenever we read anything by Morrison, because it reminded me of the, the way it was laid out reminded me so much of All-Star Superman. And mm, yeah, like yeah, I get that. The art on this is not Frank Quitely art, but like mm -hmm. the layouts are so, so specific and interesting. Also, like anything, it's a it's uh, like a lot of the story. It's it's a it, it's a uh, a love story of yes. sorts, uh, specifically about you know love until the end of time and all that. <laughs> Great, um, yeah, I, I, I don't know, yeah. There's something okay. really endearing about it. Oh no, sorry. Go ahead. This was one of the, I think, two stories in the issue that I was like, "What does this have to do with gay people?" Until like a couple pages in, and I was like, "Oh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's great." Um, yeah, I don't know. Just a cool story. Um, like, again, I haven't read Multiversity, so I'm not familiar with any of these characters. It um, makes me kind of want to. Just, just yeah, right. Yeah, yeah. That's something um, that, that actually. A lot of anthologies like this do for DC is, is you know, it just it showcases some more obscure characters that makes you just want to seek these things out and it's uh it's really nice. Uh, I, I also I'll also love... say okay. I, I particularly love the imagery of the watch, the wristwatch, mm, yeah, uh, mm -hmm. and the theme of time, which I'm guessing that's something that they're going for, uh, in general. Um, I it also it just it just feels really nice and it, it feels like Grant Morrison wants to write more of these characters oh, and have more of the freedom yeah i mean multiversity as far as i know is one of morrison's passion projects and um and it uh it, it definitely shows here you know e even though none of us are familiar with the original material <clears throat> i'm also just glad because like obviously it's been public knowledge for i think a couple of years now that they're able to be more openly queer with their writing given mm -hmm. that they're not binary yeah um yeah it's, it's really nice because i think you know it, as with a lot of uh 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 writers in the community it's it's even before they were out like you can find things and hints in their past work but when they're able to be more overt with it as with this case um it's really nice to see and uh, uh, they're, they're just something really touching about that so yeah and it's also mixed with morrison taking comic tropes and sort of parodying it in a way that isn't meant to be like funny it's just meant to be like oh this is kind of an interesting thing mm -hmm. to like to like poke fun at in a way but like not in like a you're supposed to laugh at it way just in a like well it just kind of makes you think like the villain i think is really interesting yeah yeah definitely um yeah i love that but yeah, just a great story. I enjoyed it a lot. Um, mm -hmm. Shall we move on, shall we move on to our next one? Yes. Yo. Uh, the no. next one has characters I'm most well has two characters <laughs> I'm familiar with. One character 
I'm not <laughs> familiar with. So, and Baby Makes Three is by Leah Williams, and it features uh, Harley Quinn, Poison Ivy, and Crush. Now, I know you don't know Crush, but I love Crush personally. I read, um, Crush, I'm guessing Crush I is somehow related to, to Lobo, right? Lobo, Cr- Crush is Lobo's daughter. Okay. Yeah, I didn't want yeah. to assume a familial connection. Yeah, <laughs> that that I mean, makes... it's the family resemblance. I mean, it's it's right there. It's right wasn't there. wasn't she part of the JLQ at the end of the first Pride anthology they did? Yeah, yep. Thought so. Yeah, um, and that's where uh, I know her from. I know her from uh, the One Teen Titans run that she was a part of. Um, oh yeah, I totally yeah. forgot. Yeah, she's fucking awesome in that. I, that's where I grew to like really love her character. Um, but yeah, just really fun stuff. She comes across Harley and Ivy while they're on vacation together, and and they they, they spend some time with Crush, and it's it's just a really really fun story. Um, I, really I um, love art in it. Oh, sorry. Go ahead. I, I had okay. I couldn't help but feel like this like was taking big cues from the Harley Quinn animated series. Oh, like, most definitely. It, 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 mm-hmm. The way that Harley and Ivy interact with each other in it. Yeah. Most, I, I mean, I just heard. Kaylee Cuoco and like Bell's voice, like oh, as my yeah. inner voice, which is yeah. for oh, Harley yeah. is especially <laughs> fascinating because I usually hear Sorkin, like, yeah, Sorkin or maybe Tara Strong, you know, somebody, somebody along those lines. Um, but yeah, no, in this case, like the way that this relationship is written, I, I was definitely hearing Kaylee Cuoco for me. Um, yeah, which is always fun because I love the animated series. And also, while you're listening to this, go check out our our bonus episode of Fresh Face Comics on Harley Quinn: The Animated Series, seasons one through three, plus the Valentine's Day special. It's special. And it's it's great. So yeah. Also, just watch Harley Quinn: The Animated Series because it's great. Oh yeah, it's great. I, I finally started like properly watching it mm. um, a few weeks ago with my fiance, and it was mm. oh my god, it's so good. Yeah. Yeah. Definitely. Um, but yeah, just a really fun story. Um, should we um, go to the next I one? do, I do want to bring oh, sorry, up just from like a queer perspective. I really love how this story is sort of like it, it's kind of like a queer community kind of exceeds like the bounds of of like other communities in a lot of way. A, a mm, lot of oh, ways you could be separated. You could be separated through like other through being part of other communities, but like you still share being queer with this person. And yeah. I feel like that's kind of Crush's like journey through this is kind of mm. being like, yeah, they're super villains, but they're gay, and I feel kind of like I feel like I relate to them. And mm. also, I... um, Ivy being cool with Harley kind of routinely, apparently stranding her places so that so she'll like, <laughs> yeah, feel, the, like, the twist is Harley makes... <laughs> Harley yeah. strands them on this island, which is. In the most Harley Quinn way, like, I, I will say, writing Harley Quinn as crazy is a difficult thing to, like, do properly. Um, mm-hmm. She's kind of an mm-hmm. easy character to screw up. Mm-hmm. Uh, 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 but, like, Williams really gets her. Like, yeah, I agree. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I um, I think, I, I, just, I just love it because I feel like... It's very accurate to being in a gay relationship because mm. gay people are kind of dumb, and you kind of when you're in a gay relationship, you kind of have to put up with the dumb. This is why you're guesting. I say lovingly. This. Here, <laughs> look, this, look, is, this is why you're here. <laughs> this is why we dragged you into this. <laughs> um, but anyway, let's talk about our next one. Um, hey, stranger, by uh, Nadia Shamas. I believe I'm pronouncing that correctly. Um, Jacob, this is your first gay Tim Drake story. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> mm. And first exposure to Connor, Connor Hawk. Hawk. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Who I believe is Ace. And you know what? Yeah. Uh, so I will say uh, in our DMs, uh, dear viewer, uh, Joey and Joey has long, I don't want to say complained, but discussed uh, the misuses of Tim Drake. Almost, um, yeah. Oh, yeah. Definitely. Like, I, I mean, just getting it out there. Like, it's, it's t- Tim coming out as bi is, is a very good choice for his character. I just don't think we've made full use of that story potential and have kind of misplaced Tim's priorities as a character since coming out. But this I really enjoyed actually. Um, yeah. I, I, I found this really cool because, um, especially because I'm. It, it seems to, it's the first time that like Tim and Connor are seeing each other since Tim came out, um, and Connor feels. Uh, 
I don't want to say betrayed, but but sort of lately that like Tim hasn't really talked to Connor since all this happened, and uh, there's this sort of just lost friendship aspect to this story that, um, and reconnecting that I found really important to all of this. Yeah, um, and I think I, I think I, I think it's a really I, it's a really nice I, angle to do. Also, the Damien cameo there, is Damien. <laughs> we always love Damien. We gotta um, love our straight boy. Yeah, <laughs> the only straight Robin. Hey, hey, yeah, you know that's that. Uh, uh, yeah. Uh, J- Jason and Roy are in love, and Dick and Wally are in love. I don't care. Uh, I'm not, you know, Alex, I, I mean, Jason and Roy, I, I've always been a, a big champion of, but I don't know about Dick. D- Dick, Dick's, Dick, despite giving off big gay energy, is is very hetero. I think he likes to think so. <laughs> you uh, know what? I'll, I'll take that. Sure. A gay man does not have. I mean, a straight man does not have that ass. That's all I'm saying. That's the thing. He gives off gay energy, and it, I feel like it's a trap, you know. <laughs> <laughs> all of the, all of Tim's like latent energy that he wasn't allowed to release was being siphoned off in the dick without either of them <laughs> knowing for decades and decades until eventually, finally, <laughs> finally <laughs> Tim came out. Um, I particularly like the fact that they bring up that. Oliver, like Oliver Queen, isn't like a bad dude, but that he likely just wouldn't understand mm, just yeah, from definitely. Connor's experience. He isn't worried about being rejected because he knows that Oliver would try mm-hmm. to like be there for him because, you know, Connor's his son, but he wouldn't get it at all. And I think that's yeah. very, very. Is the word poignant? I don't know. I'm I'd argue, it's, I'd argue it's, a, it's a very nuanced sort of view. Oh yeah. On allyship, at least from, <laughs> at least from my you know l- cis white straight perspective, because um, you know out pe- people who are outside of the LGBT community don't necessarily get it always, mm. but like mm-hmm. they try, mm. uh, and I think and a lot trying. Of Earnestly trying is important, and if they fail, they can try to do better. Indeed. Um, um, but yeah, I guess let's move on to our next one. Uh, so Space Transmission by A.L. Kaplan, um, who's both the writer and artist on this. Um, and I think it's, I, I love the art in this one, actually. Um, that said, though, I, I'm sure it's just my unfamiliarity with the characters involved in this story. I d- wasn't especially attached to this one personally. Dude, yeah, I, this... I, I, this is this is the one with the flat with like the 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 one flash just chambers, right? Yeah. Yep. I had no fucking idea what was going on until yeah. the very end. I only <laughs> I only know what's happening in like the last three pages and everything yeah. else. I was like, what's happening? I don't yeah. know. Y- you know what this kind of feels like, um, in a way, in sort of a neutral way, uh. It feels like a pilot. Like, yeah, this this feels like DC Comics presents number twenty. Fuck, what's the, what's the big Teen Titans one? Joey's at twenty six. Uh, like, uh, wait, uh, I, I missed the first part of what you said. The DC <laughs> Comics presents number twenty six. Uh, uh, I believe so. That's technically the beginning of the new Teen Titans. Uh, I think that's it. I yeah, what number it is. Um, yeah, Whatever so, number it is, I think it's 26. It's like 26 or 27. Yeah. I know it's 20-something. Um, but that's what this kind of felt like to me. And going to this anthology, I kind of just feel like, there are going to be characters here that I do not know. Mm-hmm. And that is always fine. But this yeah. feels I, I like a... I can't believe... Sorry. This, this I, I... feels like it's a pilot for something bigger. Yeah. Yeah, I Jacob, I have to I have to criticize you for your reference for a second because this is a flash story and you could have said showcase number four and you didn't. And I'm I very mad at you. Jacob doesn't, doesn't know what that is. I haven't read okay. showcase number four. I know that that's I the guess. first appearance of Barry Allen. Um, yeah, and this is yeah, and just because you're a massive flash, flash doesn't this mean is Jacob has to be. I don't care, fake fan, <laughs> loser. <laughs> Jacob has read exactly two flash stories. The one flash story everybody's read. Um, which isn't really a flash story. Well, it is, but it isn't. It's a mess. Go watch our Flashpoint episode to see me kind of lose my mind on that. <laughs> and then the first arc of the New Fifty Two, which is pretty decent. Yeah, so like, it's pretty good. And also has amazing artwork. Francis Manpole's. Uh, yes. Yes. Um, mm-hmm. yeah. um, anyway, 
on to our next story. You're welcome. Uh, anniversary by Josh Tru- Trujillo, I believe I'm pronouncing that. Correctly. Wait, I think. Wait, I, I don't think Jacob was dead. <laughs> oh, was he? Wasn't he? But yeah, it, this feels like it's a pilot for something almost more. He said that or, already. Yeah, I thought that that was that was my point. That was my point. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> Again, I'm gay. I'm dumb. I brought this up oh several times. <laughs> Um, yeah, anniversary though. Um, this I really enjoyed. Uh, it's about a uh, Midnighter and Apollo, and has a nice little Alan Scott cameo towards the end. Yes. My um, boy. So yeah, and- okay, I I don't know these characters, but I know that these characters are going to be in <laughs> the, the new DC universe. That's true. That's I true. Hope, I hope this really? energy this energy is accurate to the characters because <laughs> like like. like I, I feel movies? like that would be fun to see on yeah, screen. Yeah, the movies. Uh, Midnight is going to be in the movies? They're, they're yeah. doing The Authority. Oh yeah. my god. Uh, yeah. You see, I don't know anything about The Authority, so for a very long time I also just kind of thought that Midnighter wasn't even a DC character. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So oh, when yeah, I, saw, yeah, so... I saw him and I was like, whoa, you're, what are you doing here? <laughs> <laughs> um... But yeah, this I, I don't know. I, yeah, I love yeah, Jacob Hardy. I do love the the dynamic between Midnighter and Apollo here, um, and uh, I, I think Alan Scott. It's not just like a guest appearance at the end. Like he he's there to say something really important. I think, and um, yeah. Also, this probably has like my favorite artwork in the whole collection. It's done by uh, Don Aguilo. Um, it sort of does this almost watercolors. I don't know. It feels like I love it when comics do sort of a, almost watercolor style like this. Oh places. yeah. Um, Oddly it's enough, so that's why I love gritty, I uh, like. Manipal and Bukalato on Flash, because of that specific style. Uh, um, I really want to say, I there there are two things that I really love about this. One, Alan Scott showing up, I think, really works, even if he just kind of showed up for like a little cameo and he didn't really contribute too much. Um, wh- which he did contribute a lot. I'm just saying, like, even if he didn't, I feel like him being there. Um, is great because, you know, he came out relatively recently in the comics. Yeah, like, his New 52 self was gay, like, very openly. But, like, Golden Age Alan Scott, like, only very recently came out. And so I think him being there and him kind of being, like, the sage, like, wisdom, like, 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 the, like, the, like, the, Personally, the, like, the is that thing with her. Yeah, 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 it's great. The other yeah, thing yeah. is, I think it is absolutely fucking hilarious that uh, Midnighter and Apollo, they, they're, they're like, okay, so how do we piss off all of these people in the best way possible? <laughs> we'll renew our vows on live television. And, oh, it's brilliant. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. <laughs> so yeah, it's so cool fucking, fucking it's, it's so fucking funny i don't know yeah. <laughs> um yeah uh shall we move on to our next one yes all right uh, uh we have lost and found next by jeremy holt um who this is actually literally Jacob meant to be a, a pilot for uh, that new series starting up called Spirit World, um, featuring a character named uh, Xanth Xanth Zhao. I believe that's how you would pronounce. I, that. I believe that's how you pronounce that. I'm gonna, I'm gonna take a guess there. Xanth She's Zhao. so fucking cool. I love her. <laughs> she is. I do really want to re- uh, read that new series actually after having read this. Um, and also, her I love. I love are so good, interesting. <laughs> I, also, I love a good Kathy Kane appearance. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. Gay people. Yeah. Is this? I think this is my. Well, no. I was gonna say. Have you read Kathy Kane before? Have sure. has? I think she's shown up in. I know she's shown up in like one panel cameos in the Snyder room, right? Oh yeah, you're right. Yeah, yeah. Because she's I, part of the the Court of All stuff. Yeah, but I don't think she's actually. Show, we, we, we haven't, haven't actually like any. actually properly read her as a character at all. Um, yeah. yeah, just. Yeah, just tiny cameos, but she seems fun. I vaguely was aware of who she was. Mm-hmm. Uh, I'm primarily the best, the aware best of DC her in the CW, unfortunately. And oh, yeah. You know what? Here's the thing. Well, well, I, well, well, I, well, never... Here's the thing. It's not. It's it's not unfortunate because I like everything up to her appearances. It's just that there are aspects of her in the Arrowverse that I'm just like, why, like. Mm-hmm. Any I've never, of her I've never actually with the outside Arrowverse is just weird to me. I've never actually watched anything with um, 
the CW Batwoman. But I think Ruby Rose is great casting for Kathy. Oh, yeah. she's really good at it. It's, it's a shame, I... shame what ended up happening with her. Yeah. 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 Um. I'm also primarily familiar with her through the one Batman animated film, Bad Blood. Oh, she's yeah, one of the yeah. Characters oh, that's a, that's that. a yeah. great film, actually. I really enjoy that. Mm-hmm. It's really good. Yeah. yeah. Um, but yeah. Any, anything really important to say on this story? Or are we just... Um, I like the vibes of being in a graveyard in a mausoleum, and I like... I like the idea of, um, of this as a pilot. Again, what... I think these anthologies are great for these little like pilot stories, right? Like, oh, definitely. I mean, like mo- a fair few of them are. Like especially um, like the last story in this collection is also a um, a backdoor pilot for something. You know, like it, it's 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 all throughout this, and, and, and I mean it's it's doing it successfully because it does make you want to read more of these characters. Um, yeah, yeah. I think I think specifically introducing her through a like a book where she would cross over with another more well known character who's been established for several years now is great mm-hmm. yeah, because definitely. it gives her a chance to show off exactly how much chemistry she has with people who are a bit bigger in the DC universe than mm-hmm. she is. Yeah, and definitely. I also think that doing that through having her flirt with Batman's fucking cousin is mm-hmm. the best. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. Also, by the way, if you wanted a good, uh, good uh, Batwoman reading material, uh, De- Detective Comics by James Tinney and the Fourth, fantastic run, Rise and Fall of the Batman, beautiful, beautiful stuff. So check that out. Anyway, um, all right, I guess on to our next one. Uh, this is Teamwork Makes the Dream Work by Mildred Lu- Louis. I'm guessing Louis. Um, yeah, uh, this one uh, features uh, the Natasha Irons Steel, uh, which is really cool to see here. Um, and actually, also like, another character that I just I, don't know, I wasn't at all I wasn't like really familiar with. Um, she's had a few small appearances in some of the super books I've read, um, but I'm not super familiar with the character. It's just cool to see her here. Yeah. Oh yeah, it's great. I love I love this. I love the art. I love the writing. It's so good. <laughs> mm-hmm. Also great to have um, uh, some focus on Amazons that aren't Diana Prince here. <laughs> um, mm-hmm. Yeah, which we're getting a lot more of it in, in, in modern DC. It's really great to see here, I think. Yeah. Um, and I wonder, isn't there... Well, no, there's a Steelworks miniseries that I know going yeah. on right now. Yeah, which I'm assuming this will... I mean, maybe not have something to do with, but you know, I'm sure Natasha will pop up there a lot. Yeah. Um, so, yeah. Which I should read Steelworks, actually, because it, lo- it looks really good. And also, I just love Steel as a character. So... Um, the, the, the way this story is written and the way um, it's drawn reminds me a lot of The Owl House, which is like my mm. favorite show ever. Mm. And I, I especially, you know, because it's a very gay show. Mm. Um, if anybody read this, um, this issue and is listening along afterwards just to hear other people's opinion um, and wants to watch a show that a lot like this story um go watch the owl house right now don't stop until you've watched every episode in order don't eat don't sleep don't use the bathroom i will find you if you if you if you don't do what i say this is a bad time to mention i've never watched the owl house i'll kill you right now in your sleep please do it um i'll knock you out so you'll go to sleep and then i'll kill you (laughs) jesus Anyway, let's. That got, let's that got really dark. Let's move on. Let's move on. If you ever wanted to peek into our Discord calls, uh, that's that's it right there. Uh, no, this I is will say, people talk. If, this, you're gay, if, you're gay, if you're gay, please back me up in the comments. <laughs> this one, I, I don't want to say kind of lost me, but I think this one was the story that maybe I found. The Dance by Rex Oval. Is that yeah. Name? Yeah. I, See, I love Ghostmaker, so that that's, I, I don't know. I, I, which I know is a character you know nothing about. Oh, they're very, this, this is the one where I feel kidding? like... This is one of the highlights for me. I love this one. Yeah, this is, this is great. <laughs> See, I just couldn't really, like, connect with it. I like the accent. The accent is very well choreographed. It's also the story in the Pride Anthology with the most explicit gay sex. So there's that. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I was, I was going to say, a bit surprised. I mean... Yeah, yeah. I mean, are you... I was so happy because, I, because like... I was, like... I... Like, as a, as a queer person, like, one of the things that people kind of have to learn um, when they come out 
um, and when they uh, or and like when they know people who are queer, is that whether or not you are sexual in any way, even if you're like asexual, that your identity is tied to sexuality to some degree, and mm. like 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 for an asexual person, it would be tied to the absence of sexuality, but like the tying it to the idea like tying the story to the idea of like a dance and like how the body moves and how in any form that's beautiful is like really great and i was really freaking surprised when i saw it like i i thought it was like really beautiful it's probably one of my favorites from the entire issue mm, yeah I, I really enjoyed this one so yeah, fuck oh, you. Sorry, Jay. I totally interrupted the fuck out of you. Yeah, fuck Look, you, Jay. No, 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 that, no, that, that was awesome. Probably like, yeah, that's, that's... It's only because I don't really know own. these characters. This is the one where I feel like I don't know the characters by the end. Oh, Are you telling well. me you haven't watched The Fairly Odd Parents? You haven't seen Cat Left? <laughs> I never had cable growing up, so Are you no. not imagining Adam West's voice? <laughs> I, I, no, dude, I'm telling you, literally, in the back half of it, I started reading him as Adam West. <laughs> Hey, is Fairly Odd Parents like a DC thing? I thought it was just no, a... no, 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 no. Adam West shows up. Adam West shows up. I he think he's playing a character called Catman. Yeah. Remember, no, no, I... he's playing himself, and he's playing himself playing a character called Catman. <laughs> okay, and he <laughs> has the good. exact same design as he does in the comic. Yeah. <laughs> Let me go get a picture. Actually, I'll send it after we're so, done here. Because isn't isn't is okay. Catman a, a Gail Simone character? Or I, know, character? No. I know he's appeared no, in no, Catman, Gail Simone. Catman works. comes from the Silver Age. Catman comes from like, okay. the, the late. I know, I know Gail Simone's used yeah. the character a fair bit on what Secret Six, right? I think so. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but oh I, I've never. It. Yeah, it's almost exactly the same. It's so good. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to send. Um, I'm going to send. Um, I'm going to send this um, in this format because I think it'd be really funny. I'm going to send it in the chat on the server. Here you go. Um, but Just anyway, onto, the onto my favorite story of the collection. Uh, my best bet by Christopher Cantwell, who is a character, uh, not a character, a writer that we covered before on Fresh Face yeah. Shots, uh, which is really cool. Uh, he's doing the current Superman story on uh, on Brave and the Bold, which is really nice. Um, but yeah, it's John Constantine time, and I will never complain about such a thing. Um, I, I will also, say, and I will also say, John I, Kent. I, I nearly cheered when I saw Constantine here. It's, it's Constantine, it's John Kent, it's Felix Faust. I mean, come on. like There, there, there is nothing to not love here. Like, I... I I love the characterization of Constantine, and I love. Mm -hmm. I don't want to spoil like the, the twist. The, the twist is kind it's of a really obvious, good twist. <laughs> but it's a really good twist. Also, like, can't. I, I'm I'm so glad we're reading more of Cantwell now that I could, like, almost by accident, just because I loved his story. I, I quite liked his story in the Batman: The Brave and the Bold issue that we read for one shot. Mm. Yeah. But this is also just very fun. Um, yeah. Yeah. Um. Yeah, just great stuff. Also, uh, Oliver as a character, I don't know Oliver. It's He's part of the Hellblazer run that I haven't read, which was like the late New 52 going into Rebirth run. Um, uh, so I, I don't know Oliver, uh, but I mean, I, I like what's happening here with Oliver. Um, and also, I just love John Constantine fucking with John Ken. I think that's great. Um, for yeah, a bit, for a, this, this was the other story where I was reading it and I was like, what What does this have to do with pride? I don't understand. John and Constantine even... and John Kent. <laughs> no, no, I know that. I was just like, I was just like every other story here, I feel like has elements of that beyond the characters, like oh, them actually gotcha. interacting in some sort of queer way or like, hmm. like, like in regards to people like Connor and Tim just kind of talking to each other about queer stuff. But hmm. I was like, what? Who's Oliver? What time I looked it up? Like like earlier I was making ramen or something and I was like, huh. I think I know what's going on. <laughs> and I looked it up and I was like, oh okay, I get it. I get it now, it's gay. Yeah. <laughs> um <laughs> anyway, um there's also a little thing before the last story here called um a tribute to Rachel Pollack. Um which is just a fair few creators that worked with Rachel Pollack, uh, just telling great stories and anecdotes and just what Rachel, what she meant to them as a person. Um, I, I think Neil Gaiman's was the one that made made me tear up, but that's also yeah. because 
Well, it's, I mean, it's Neil Gaiman. It's yeah. Neil Gaiman. Yeah. Um, I will say, not, none of us are familiar with Pollock's work. Yeah. Um, yeah. Which, had had she not sadly passed, she would have, like, this page space would have been a story by Rachel Pollock. Um, oh, oh, I see. I did not know that. Yeah, that's what they, that's, I believe it was mentioned either at the top of... Oh, wait, that's right. Yep, movie. you're right. Yeah. Yeah. So, um... I will say the the art, which is I believe all art taken from her Doom Patrol run, mm-hmm. uh, which is definitely the thing as far as I know that she's most known for. I, yeah, that's the thing she's most known for. Uh, yeah. um, it makes also, me want to. I'm, I'm glad they include. I'm glad they include the the sort of house ad page they've been including in some issues recently as the tribute to her as as part of the actual anthology, um, which is really nice to see there. Yes. Just a great page. Um, um, yeah, just a creator that I know is is just sorely missed in the community and um yeah i think i i i I, I will i'm sorry go ahead i will say that unfortunately i wasn't able to read it just because it's really hard for me to read um specifically stuff about like real life death Mm -hmm. and also like um, it, 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 it like with my ADHD, it's really hard for me to sit down and read something that's like wall to wall text. Yes, um, I gotcha. And yeah, so I didn't read it, but I could definitely feel from just how many pages and how many people like dedicated themselves to writing something yeah. in those sections, just how much of an impact like everything she's done had. Yeah. Um, and it definitely made me want to read a lot of her stuff just because like I feel like I feel like I kind of like just need to now you yeah, know yeah yeah like I guess for all of us who haven't read Pollock stuff like I, I feel like we I, I at least feel personally that I that I've missed a, a very important piece of, of comic book history by not having read any of her work yeah. before um yeah something I'm definitely going to seek out in the near future so all and, right uh I will uh, say the final story. This is, I, I, I this mean, is it's, it's, it's literally an ad for something else. I love um, Nicole Maines. I don't. Nicole Maines is a it's lovely a human ad. being. I, I, <laughs> I will say it, it feels a little out of place after just this beautiful tribute. Mm. Like to go, oh, we're going to an ad yeah. with some an ad with some beautiful art. Like, yeah, I mean, ooh, also, yeah. I, mean do, I mean, do you know who, do you know Nicole Maines, Jacob? I do not. She's she's she the actress that plays, plays Dream on the CW. Yeah, oh, she's okay. a character yeah. named yeah. She, she plays a character named Dreamer in Supergirl and in a couple of other stuff. See, like, I once again I tapped out fairly early. Which I believe also though she was a character created for the CW, right? Yes, yes, yeah. because and she so... she's like a spinoff character of a character who is in like the Legion of Superheroes. She's like her ancestor, mm. and. Um, uh, and yeah, so yeah. and she's written like pretty much every comic appearance of Dreamer, right? And she's really good at it. Yes, she has. Yeah, that's awesome. I fucking love that. Oh, that's mm-hmm. so good. Trans oh. queen. Trans queen. Yeah, she's awesome. So, all right. I guess that was that. Um, there are also some great pinups that are uh, sp- uh, spursed throughout this uh, this collection um, mm-hmm. uh, that, that are that are really nice to see here. Um, I, I love a lot of them actually. Uh, which one? Uh, oh yeah, I love I love the first one, the, the pub showdown. I thought that was fucking great. Um, any any particular ones that you guys enjoyed? I like the one I where think... all the characters were playing poker. Oh yeah, yeah, that one's great. Yep. I don't know. I, I part of me, I just love when I see when you see these characters, especially like characters who have like angst, just get to like be characters and like do life stuff. Yeah. Um, like I, like playing sorry. poker with your friends. Yeah, yeah. I um I can't recall any of the pinups specifically, and I do not have the attention span to scroll through all of them again right now. <laughs> but I will say that the cover is like phenomenal. Oh, I do like, the cover. L- yeah, like I part of the reason I I really like comic books is I think it's like a uniquely colorful medium that you don't even get to see in a lot of like animation and so I I think that cover and like all of these stories for the most part um the the stories that aren't like utilize their less colorful art in really good ways um in just as valid of ways I think Mm -hmm. I think like the cover really personifies a lot of why I really love comic books 
Mm -hmm. And also um, the fact that, uh, that our Pride Anthology's cover is is so colorful, uh, I think is, is is really important um, to the to the not just not just the aesthetic of the whole collection, um, but also to the stories that it's telling and um, and to Pride in general. I'll also yeah. say I I think it's I think this Pride Anthology is something that, that DC's done better than Marvel, especially oddly enough with Phil Jimenez's uh, introduction. Mm, uh, yes, which is a very pointed and very biting introduction at the state of the world uh, yeah. right now, especially in the U.S., uh, which we are all American and we are all seeing things, uh, what's happening in the world and the rolling back of not only LGBT rights, but other rights and um, of minorities in general. Mm. Uh, and believe it or not, telling stories like this, um, you know, it may seem like a small thing, but just telling stories, um, get, you know, getting these getting these experiences out there is, is just as important as actively going out and, and, and protesting and, 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 and activism. I, I think, um, you know, everything has its part to play. And uh, yeah, being a part of that is, ve is very important. As a pansexual trans woman who is also gender fluid, um, I, I like when i found out that dc was doing this was like doing these anthologies every year it like really hit me that i could finally read things that were focused on characters that were like me to some degree um or had the same experiences or similar experiences or even like wildly different experiences while like sharing the community and like i don't think any of them have been written by people who weren't queer to some degree like over yeah. the course of the past three years and just like getting to like be introduced to and learn that people who work at dc are like queer like people who i who i've read before like finding out that they're queer is like amazing and finding out about new people and like seeing people like grant morrison who i've known as queer for a while get to write their own stuff in this is great and like even even the stories that won't shift public opinion because there are stories that will i feel like though even the stories that won't have that big of an impact will just have a big enough impact on one queer kid or adult or teenager or like per, like like older person who's who lived through the worst of this yeah um, um in a way that we've all been very sorely needing in a while for a while um and it'll i think it'll help a lot of people who think that they're straight or cis realize that they're not um um especially just because of how focused on it is in these mm. stories and even uh, and even on straight or cis people reading this like like say myself um you know, it, 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 it also helps people like that to be also just generally more aware and privy to um, the exer experiences and issues of, of, of people in the community um, and, and just getting those stories out there. It, like I said, it's just is so important and um, and, and not not exclusively um, to people in the community, but uh, I think to the world uh, potentially. Um, yeah, I don't know, just in my opinion, at least. Yeah. Yeah. So. Oh yeah. fuck! Um, that was great. That was that was great. That was a great conversation to have. It was yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. Kira, thank you yeah. once again so much for coming on. It was lovely to have yeah. you here again. Yeah, yeah, of course. And uh, if you enjoy Kira's things, she will be on later this year at some point, I believe. <laughs> uh, on You're the making a lot of assumptions proper. there, Jacob. I know she is guessing on at least one Marvel episode in that first take. <laughs> look, look, like, look. Uh, Jacob. I, you're making a lot of assumptions. <laughs> I am making a lot of assumptions, but I think my assumptions are correct. Jacob, I I don't have to be nice to you because because it's your birthday when we're recording this. Or <laughs> it's Pride Month. Like fuck you. Like I. <laughs> um, um. If I can if I can bring up one topic that's mostly unrelated, actually, to oh, sure. everything we've been talking about. Absolutely. Speaking of Marvel, and this is something I've been wanting to talk about for the past few minutes. Um. For those of you who don't know, and I don't, I don't know when this will be coming out. Um, recently, the comic book community lost like one of the greatest comic artists ever um, in John Romita Senior, who um, 
died as we're recording this two days ago. It was only announced yesterday. Um, if anyone would want to see what, like, like the kind of impact this man has had, I recommend reading um, his era on the Amazing Spider-Man. Um, the the man was an absolute legend. He's up there with like the absolute greats, like George Perez and yeah. Alex Ross. He really shaped the modern perception of how Spider-Man looks. And um, it really sucks that he's gone. So yeah. I, I heavily recommend reading his work, especially The Amazing Spider-Man, but everything else he's ever done. As do I. Yeah, um, truly a, f a phenomenal talent and one of the all-time greats in, in the comics industry um, who definitely deserves to be celebrated. And uh, yeah. Um, yeah, thank you for bringing that yep. up. That, yeah, that's yep. very important. So, All right, I guess that about does it. Um, yes. Thank you all once again for, for, for listening and watching and sticking around with this uh, with this video because it uh, it means a lot and it, it's an important time for people everywhere not just in the community but just everywhere in general and it's an uh, Im important conversation to be had um this, these are stories that are, that are meant to be talked about um and i'm glad to be talking about them on this channel so yeah it's fantastic. and if you if you if you enjoyed this episode there are plenty more where it came from a fresh face one shots of, of the podcast proper we'll have three more one shots episode coming out later this month Yes, yeah. Uh, we're talking about Superman number five, Brave and the Bold number two, and Wonder Woman number 800. 800. Um, yeah, which is very exciting. We're starting the, the Tom King stuff on Wonder Woman, which is very I, exciting. I, 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 love, I love how it's like five, two, and then this massive 800. 800, yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. <laughs> you love to see it. Um, um, if yeah. there's nothing else before before we go, I also want to say from a queer, a queer gal to every straight and cis person out there um do 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 your queer friends a kindness and give them all the money in your wallet also buy them comic books um whenever they ask you um and Kira, um Kira, i love you Kira, i think this is just what you want you want the two of us to do to you <laughs> uh, uh, I, I will leave i will leave kira's paypal cash app everything in this <laughs> Um, I, I will give out my address so that you can all mail comics to me that you own, um, especially the ones that you want to keep for sentimental value. They're mine now. They're not. They're not yours. Um, you your grandpa. Me. Your grandpa handed that comic to you when he was dying. Like his. Like the cover is soaked in his blood. Give that to me. It's mine now. If you love the bizarre, aggressive energy that Kira brings to this video, be sure to follow her on Twitter. I'll leave her Twitter link down in the description below. It's it's just more of the same. It's pretty great. Um, all right. Thank you all so much for watching. It really means a lot. Um, I guess until next time, this has been Joey Morgan. And Jacob Licklider. And the gay Kira. Uh, yes. <laughs> Goodbye. Goodbye. <laughs>